Valve HTC Vive Facts and Speculation So, how does the HTC Vive track your position within a virtual space? It's different to what we've seen from other headsets currently on the market. The Oculus DK2 uses a camera which videos an array of LEDs on the headset. This is similar to how the Wii Moat and Wii Sensor Bar work, and it looks like this is how the Sony Morpheus headset works too. Devices like Microsoft's Kinect project a mesh of dots onto its surroundings, and this mesh of dots is recorded by the Kinect camera. The system uses any distortion within this mesh of dots to work out the shape of the world. This way, you track the position of everything that is in front of the camera, rather like draping a cloth with a regular pattern over an invisible object, and then guessing the shape of the invisible object by looking at how the pattern on the cloth is affected. So, here are four things that we know about Vive. 1. That it includes a head-mounted display that will have over 70 sensors. 2. That there are two controllers, one for each hand. 3. That there are two lighthouse laser emitters. And finally 4. That we know the lighthouse sensors use laser pulses. Right, enough about facts. Now it's time for some speculation. Everything here on out should probably be treated as such based on what we've read and seen so far. Vive's two lighthouse units contain an array of laser emitting diodes. Each laser emits pulses of light. The pulses are used to encode data. Like in Morse code, each laser's pattern is unique. It would encode a message like message from base station 1, laser emitting diode 54, pulse 96, or something like that. The two lighthouses would bathe the room with laser beams and the sensor-covered headset and handheld would detect these laser messages. This unique pattern allows any receiving sensor to understand where a laser beam originates and would allow the system to work out the time difference between each package. With this information, the system is able to understand something about the position of the sensor. Each laser message received on the headset or controllers allows the system to position the devices with increasing accuracy. For example, a first laser would allow the system to understand that the headset could be in one of these positions even without the timing information, since the system knows the position of each sensor. The second laser could narrow down the possible positions. The third laser could nail things down even further. Additional lasers would increase accuracy even more. The timing information from the laser pulses, internal gyroscope readings and accelerometer readings further augment position information to provide resilience in case you lose data connection temporarily. The lighthouses act like lighthouses for a ship in a storm. Each lighthouse gives you a better idea of your own position from the lighthouse. However, you need a map of where the lighthouse is in order to know where you are. So how do you get that? How would this be set up? The two lighthouses can see each other. They can detect each other's positions from the lasers that the other emits, or the user can manually key in this information into the system. The user then walks around a room to mark out the boundaries of the room, or they can accept the defaults of a room size, which is either rectangular or square. So what are some of the possible benefits? I would like to leave you with three particular features that differentiate the Lighthouse system from others. Firstly, price. There are no cameras involved in the core of the solution and sensors and laser emitters are relatively cheap. The front-facing camera of the headset could be used to augment position information, but it is not the primary source of position information. Secondly, it provides scalability, scalable density and scalable accuracy. For example, when you want to track three people in a room, you need to track three headsets and six controllers. The three users could share the laser matrix created by the same lighthouses, and these lighthouses would not need to connect back to the PCs of each user either. More lighthouses could be introduced into the same size space to reduce problems caused by occlusion. Just think about the reduction in cabling problems. Additionally, you are less constrained in terms of scaling your processing power since each user could make use of their own processing unit, such as a PC, which means that nobody needs to pay for a supercomputer to create a platform for large-scale tracking. 
Furthermore, the processing required for tracking using the lighthouses is relatively cheap when compared to trying to do something like using image recognition from a video camera to detect markers, like in solutions such as Kinect, Oculus Rift DK2 and Sony's offering. Lastly, composability. You can just keep on adding lighthouses to the matrix to grow your trackable area. Perhaps there could be a wireless protocol to pass lighthouse base information in between the lighthouses and to the devices that need to be tracked. Perhaps this information can be gathered by a user's device as they walk through the matrix of lasers. Perhaps the lighthouse system detects new lighthouses dynamically and you just need to throw them down on the ground near the existing matrix of lasers. Perhaps they could have their own power source and would not require wires. Perhaps they could augment their battery life using a user's kinetic energy as they walk by. Perhaps they could use users as a power source.